Lucio. Listen to him. A fine set of lungs. And what shall we call him, my love? Ezio. Ezio Auditore da Firenze. With Ezio supposed to be returning in Assassin's Creed Nexus VR, I thought it would be interesting to discuss the actual differences between him and the Bruhala iteration of the legend himself. These two are just not the same person. One is an alternate version of the same character in a parallel universe because there are quite a handful of distinct differences. So right off the bat, the immediate inconsistency in the lore tells us that Ezio made it to Valhalla and couldn't believe it. This is completely different to the Ezio we saw in the video game, who died of a random infection in his chest and slowly passed when he sat on that bench in the year 1519. Now you might be wondering, Craig, why can't he go to Valhalla too? They're both warriors and besides, if Boldvar can just waltz right in after breaking down the gates to Valhalla single-handedly and Orion can just crash land in, then surely Ezio can get by, right? Wrong. The only way to get to Valhalla first time round and not let yourself in is strictly through a Valkyrie picking you up and letting you into Valhalla after dying in battle. Besides, has anyone seen Ezio in any future Assassin's Creed games after Assassin's Creed Revelations? Nope. This can only mean one thing. This Ezio that we can play as in Brawlhalla is actually in Helheim, one of the Nine Realms, for all his sins that he's committed. Moving on we have the personality. And I'll be honest, not really a strong argument here to make, but in my opinion, in Bruhala law, it states that Ezio was a master at swordsplay, stealth, and leaping from tall building to tall building. Okay, that's all standard stuff to the Ezio we know from the Assassin's Creed games. However, it also says that he was making friends in Valhalla like it was nothing. I understand Ezio is a beloved assassin anti-hero who eventually learned to kill only if needed, but still, the Ezio in Assassin's Creed before his death would in fact deny requests from people like Xiao Jun, a Chinese assassin, and at first before going out of his way to help people like Caspian's Leap of Faith for example. Then there is the quote in which he is talking to Val and saying he took no pleasure in his skill. What? Like, what? Ezio's whole family were assassins, hence the auditory family. That's why they came back for his family and blood and killed his father and brother. If he took no pleasure for avenging his family at the end of it all, which he did in fact do, then why is this Ezio not the old one we saw at the end of his passing, with the grey hair and all? That just means he's an alternate version of Ezio and from a completely different timeline. One in which learning that forgiveness is what is important and not revenge, and another in which Ezio couldn't have learned this because he didn't even learn it yet. Another quote from the game indicates him stealing, although he claims to be the renaissance man. Now we have the argument that I think ultimately sells it for me. So in Brujala, Ezio has the Apple of Eden, and yet in the Assassin's Creed video game, we all saw Ezio refuse the Apple, and all of the temptations that came with it, even though it still ended up activating in the end. Okay, okay, I have one final argument to make, and that is the womanizer argument. Ezio would meet with ladies left and right and eventually ended up with Sophia before his passing and having two kids with her actually. So where in Ezio Bruhala's law does it mention a girl's name other than Ada? Nowhere. Not enough evidence. Therefore, whose Ezio is this? You could tell me I'm overlooking into it and this Ezio is in fact the same one from the game and my arguments may not be that strong enough. But did you see Ezio in Assassin's Creed carrying an orb and three stalking people in ranked? No, I didn't think so. 
Now with all that being said, everything else in the law checks out. However, all my arguments still further assist the fact that this Ezio isn't even from the same timeline we saw the Ezio die in. Unless you still want to say that I'm overlooking into it. At the end of the day, Ezio is a cool character and I just really felt like I wanted to talk about him so no hard feelings and all. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Hi, my name is Craig and thanks for tuning in to Craig's Cartoons. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe and check out some other videos on your screen. And until then, I'll catch you in the next one.